identification of individual subclever cultivar is difficult, but not being able to identify them means you could be forfeiting up to 30% of winter production from growing outdated cultivars or even growing estrogenic clovers that affect sheep health and fertility. You don't need to become an expert on subclover identification, but basic skills can help narrow down what subclover cultivars are growing in your paddocks. I'm going to give you some tips on what to look for and show you how to use the MLA fact sheet, how to identify subclover cultivars. Subclover always has hairs on the back of its leaves and this makes it readily distinguishable from most other sown clover species. There are four features of subclover that help us narrow down what we might have. These are one, the runners and if they are hairy, two, the flowers and if they have a red band, three, the stipule which is a tiny leaf at the intersection of the runner and flower stem and if it has red colouring on it, and four, the leaf markings. So, identification is made easier by selecting a plant with all of these features. Inspect in early spring when plants are growing under ideal conditions. At this time, leaf markings and key distinguishing factors such as runner hairiness and flowers are identifiable. Choose plants exposed to sunlight. This will show up any pigmentation on the flowers and stipules. There are likely to be different cultivars growing together and they can get tangled. So pull out a runner and examine its features. Inspect several leaves and stipules along the runners as distinguishing features may change slightly because of different ages and stages of maturity. The youngest leaves closest to the tip tend to have clearer leaf markings. Having selected a runner, we can work through the MLA fact sheet to narrow the subclever cultivars into one of six groups using an identification key. The important features to examine in order are one, hairs on the runners, two, the colour of the flower tube, and three, the colour of the stipule. This allows the plants to be classified into one of six groups. The six groups are hairy red group, hairy green group, hairy combination group, smooth red group, smooth green group, or smooth combination group. Now, let's look at each feature in detail. Step one, hairs on the runners. Runners are either considered hairy, very hairy, or have no or few hairs. This plant has a hairless runner and this puts me on this part of the chart. Step two is the flower tube colour. This is commonly known as the calyx. Flowers on most varieties have green flower tubes, but some have distinct or faded red bands which can cover 25 to 100% of the tube. In the key, I need to decide if the flower tube has any red colouring or is green. Here, this flower's tube is green. Step three is stipule colour. Markings will vary from being green to having red veins or red bands or solid red colouring. For the identification key, you just need to decide if it is green or has red colouring on it. This plant has red on the stipule. This means I have narrowed down the cultivar to the smooth combination group. At this stage, we can determine if the group contains any estrogenic subclovers and these are shown in red on the guide. The grouping also allows you to identify clovers in the group and their release date. You might be happy to stop the process there, having some confidence that you don't have estrogenic subclovers. Or you might want to try and find out what cultivar it is and whether the clover you have sown is persisting or you have one of the older and less productive cultivars present. If you wish to know the cultivar, you can use other distinguishing features to help identify individual cultivars. To continue, select the correct table from the group identified previously. Other characteristics are then used to identify individual cultivars. There are seven distinguishing features to look for on leaves. The first five relate to leaf markings. 
Leaf markings can aid identification, but they can also be confusing as they can fade with the season and be different in winter under cold temperatures compared to spring. Only early spring leaf photos of cultivars are shown in the fact sheet. There is a chart in the fact sheet that shows the codes used to describe leaf markings. Crescents are light green and located in the centre of the leaflet. They can either be a dot or triangular, and crescents are coded C, with the number 1 to 4 representing how far the crescent extends across the leaflet. Arms then extend from the crescent to the edge of the leaf and are usually white. Arms are coded A and numbered according to their thickness, with one being narrow and three being very broad. The bands are a lighter green compared to the rest of the leaf. They are coded B and numbered one or two for narrow and wide bands respectively. We then look at flecking and flushing, appearing as black and brown marks on the leaves. It is caused by leaf pigment. It is more obvious in winter under cold temperatures, but may also persist into spring. So the position of flushing can also help in identification. Flecking and flushing tendency ranges from absent to very strong. We then look at leaf shape. Some cultivars have leaves with strong indentation, which makes them look heart-shaped. Other cultivars have more rounded leaflets. Leaf indentation is described from absent to very strong. Under the group of tables are pictures of common cultivars which belong to that group, which show their leaf features. All subclovers have hairs on the underside of their leaves. However, cultivars vary in their degree of hairiness on the upper leaf surface, the leaf stem and the flower stem, ranging from absent to strong. The degree of hairiness on a cultivar can vary, but if there is none, then it can be used as a distinguishing characteristic for identification. We hope this process and our tips on identifying subclover help you get to know what clovers you have growing on your farm. Find the fact sheet and more information on estrogenic clovers on the MLA website. Remember, if you are unsure, seek further advice from an advisor.